Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here in Northern Virginia. We're recovering the Surface Navy Association's 30th annual uh, conference and uh, symposium. Our coverage here is sponsored by Leonardo DRS. Uh, and we've got with us Carlo uh, Zaffanella, who is the Vice President and General Manager for General Dynamics uh, Mission Systems. Uh, and uh, um, you guys are uh, uh, acquired uh, the Bluefin uh, uh, Robotics Company. And uh, you guys are also developing uh, the Knifefish uh, unmanned uh, system that's going to be going on the littoral combat ship, and that's in development right now. Talk to us a little bit about what that, uh, you know, where you guys are on development of that as uh, you guys are getting uh, ready to go into low rate uh, initial production and and then get into uh, get into deployment. But talk to us a little bit about what that what that uh, system, uh, you know, where you are in development and what capability that's going to bring the force. Sure, absolutely. So and, and you can see some of the products behind us. So 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 the Bluefin products are a family of underwater robots, right? They're unmanned underwater vehicles uh, used for all sorts of things, from defense to, to various commercial and industrial applications. Um, we acquired the company a couple of years ago because we were already working together. We were the prime for a program called Knifefish, and Knifefish is based on the 21-inch diameter Bluefin vehicle. So we, we have products called the Bluefin 9, Bluefin 12, Bluefin 21, relating, of course, to the diameter in inches. So the Bluefin 21, productized by the Navy then, it developed into what was originally called the Surface Mine Countermeasures, SMCM, and now the Knifefish program. It will deploy off of the littoral combat ship, which we are system integrators for, for the even-numbered ships with our prime Austal USA, and on that ship, once it's deployed, it is capable of going out and finding and identifying mines in shallow water mines that can be buried in shallow waters. So you can imagine how complicated that problem is. Um, when we acquired Bluefin a couple of years ago, uh, we had great technology, clearly great technology. We needed to really finish the productization, and it was challenging. Anything that's this sort of cutting edge can be very challenging. Uh, we had great support from the Navy, uh, great support from General Dynamics, and uh, the results, frankly, have been excellent. So there have been a number of releases in the last uh, in the last year with a lot of progress made and um, we are marching towards milestone C later this spring which would be then the trigger point to allow low rate initial production of, of the units and I'm highly confident that we're we're going to be there right on time. It's uh, it's come a long way so the, the product has at this point done the testing, the contractor trials uh, satisfactorily and has been moving forward with all sorts of Navy trials. Everything from demonstrating it in the water to the launch and recovery to how it would be maintained and taken apart, and it's a great system. It's, it's incredibly simple compared to some of the unmanned vehicles they've bought in the past. Uh, you can easily take it apart and field replace things like batteries and payloads in a, in, a, in a very different way than what was possible before. So I'm highly confident that we're uh, we're really in a pretty good place now. And and roughly how long before you guys finish that process and are have that low rate initial uh, production uh, decision under your belt? Yeah, so, so the milestone is later this spring. I want to say that it's in April. Uh, then, of course, it's up to the Navy when they would move forward with LRIP and up to the, the way that the funding lines up. Uh, we'd be prepared, obviously, to move out right away. Uh, we're already actively taking the design as it exists and, and upgrading it in intelligent ways. Um, in addition to then, it's now one of a family of products that GD, from the day that we bought Bluefin, has been fully reproductized. So the nine inch, the 12 inch, massive overhauls underway now and, and on pace to really have a great conclusion this year. The 21, as you know, is now done and is the basis for Nightfish. And then this product here, which is the Sand Shark product, which we launched fully last summer, um, which is our small, lightweight, single man portable unit used for all sorts of different sort of surveillance reconnaissance ki kinds of missions. So a uh, pretty healthy platform array now. Um, and, and what sort of numbers are we talking about? You know, when you guys look at the knife fish uh, program, but also across across the line, how much money are we talking about? You know, how large of an addressable market is it that you guys are looking at? Yeah, that's a great question. So the, the way that I, I like to give this answer all the time um, would be to think back maybe 20 years and think of what UAVs were like back then. I mean, we had the technology, right? We knew what they were, but the market wasn't very big. And why was that? Because a few things had to change. We were able to put much smaller computers in the air. We could, you know, like your cell phone, we could put cameras in the air that were very cheap and easy to make. We could put a lot more bandwidth to the ground, and all of a sudden, they were useful. The market exploded, right? What, you, what answer you might have gotten from somebody asking that question 20 years ago 
would have been wrong just five years later because the market got much bigger, much more interesting, much more complex. That's where we are with UUVs. We can communicate differently under the water and better. We have intelligent ways for not only autonomy, but the longevity of the, of the UUVs, how they maybe can interoperate. We demonstrated last year at Antex, which is a, a um, it, it's an event held at the Naval Undersea Warfare Center in, in Rhode Island, a 21 inch deployed, and then when it finds something, it then redeploys, a, a small knife fish and a small UAV that then goes and relays data. Now all of a sudden you have an entire interconnected system of unmanned vehicles. That capability never existed before. It's all new. And so the uses are expanding. The productization makes them real. My answer would be that we expect that this market will grow quite meaningfully. Now how big? That's, you know, it's guesswork at that point. Mm -hmm. Right now there are a few programs of record of which Knifefish is one, and you can look up what, what its numbers are, uh, but I think that if they work as advertised, which I am quite certain they will, um, the Navy will have a lot of use for them. You know, unfortunately, asymmetrical warfare like mine warfare is a pretty cheap, easy kill. Something like this that takes sailors out of harm's way Right. Pretty capable device. Um, yeah, I mean, I remember being in Bahrain and talking to the uh, mine squadron out there, and uh, you know, the extensive. It's it's for those people who don't think there is already extensive use of systems like this are mistaken, given how critical they are to the to the mine mission. Now, I want to talk to you a little bit about technological challenges, though. Mm -hmm. For unmanned air systems, uh, connectivity is is easy. Uh, you know, generally mastering the atmosphere. It's a it's a very thin atmosphere. It doesn't put a lot of pressure on you. Uh, water is a very invasive uh, 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 commodity, especially uh, salt water and pressure. Talk to us also about some of the fundamental challenges of getting systems that are reliable autonomy, getting it to the to the level of autonomy required in decision making, given that this will be operating in littorals, which is a very cloud, cloudy, messy space, uh, as well as being able to detect anything that's buried um, under shifting ground where it, it, you know, very little sand, it's not as much of a challenge, a lot of sand, it becomes a bigger challenge. Talk to us a little bit about all of these dynamic challenges that you guys have been working through, and as, in as much as you can discuss them, what are some of the, right, the, right. the, the, the very clever uh, sure. solutions you guys well, have drafted? Understanding the obvious restrictions of some of those questions, right? But um, we, within mission systems, General Dynamics mission systems, have a, uh, a pretty vibrant undersea technology group, where we have been doing programs uh, for the Navy for many years of systems that exist unattended under the ocean for very long periods of time. That creates a certain capability. That's part of what we have brought to the ownership of, of what was Bluefin Robotics and now is, is part of GDMS. So that tackling the very complicated problem, how do you make something work for a very long time underwater, that's something we're quite good at. And there's a whole wide array of technologies, not just technologies, but processes, manufacturing techniques. How do you do that so it's reliable, repeatable, predictable performance? Technologically, I think that the challenges with UUVs are pretty well documented, right? Propulsion's one. Um, how do you keep power under the water? If you'd like to stay clandestine, you don't want to surface, you don't want to come back and get either you know, batteries juiced up or you want to go and get, get solar panels charged. So trying to get longer legs, very valuable part of UUV technology, there's a lot of various investments going on there. Right now, the most valuable is power management and only, only drawing the amount of power that we need, having battery investments that are smart. Uh, we don't necessarily want to be the maker of those things. We want to be some combination of make what we need and intelligently buy the rest. That's kind of been a long suit for mission systems and it's something that I think we're going to continue to do for quite a while. Um, autonomy, autonomy is another really interesting one in that if you say autonomy very broadly, there's a lot of autonomy algorithms and techniques and, and, and whatnot, but under the water, it's fairly unique because what sensing do you have? How do you know where you are? How do you know what's coming? And so um, modifying so that modern autonomy algorithms and the developments going on all across the industry can be applied intelligently to UUVs, something we're also spending a fair bit of time on. Uh, but I would say that our focus in these first couple of years has been really productization. Make the products reliable. When you, I call it GD quality. When you put it in the water, it absolutely works. No question about it. And that's something that you don't want to take for granted. I mean, with unmanned vehicles, 
immediately the standard sometimes is a little lower than with a manned vehicle, and it doesn't need to be that, right? So, so that's that's, that's, that's a great slogan. Phoebe uh, uh, Novakovic ought to consider that as, as one of the, <laughs> the company slogans, GD quality. Um, uh, let me ask you one thing, though, about the commercial marketplace, right? I mean, this is also a commercial vehicle. It was a commercial company adapted to military application. Talk to us a little bit about how some of the defense refinements are going to actually help you score bigger wins, you think, on the commercial market. Yeah, and I'm probably still living my way through this in that, um, remember the old term dual use technologies, right? And, 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 and for a long time that seemed like such a good concept and yet markets diverge in their needs and e even those that seem somewhat closely related. I think here what we're seeing that the commercial market's interesting since a lot of it has to do with exploration and therefore it's the petroleum industry. It goes through highs and lows in a cycle that's relatively quick and so where there is perhaps for a few years great demand, then for a few years it backs off. That's a difficult way to run you know, this kind of investment. And so coupling what we do for the defense with what we do for commercial and say, let's make one family of products, make the payloads reasonably interchangeable so that they can do various missions. I think it helps to satisfy that. Uh, you know, right now as we look forward, clearly the defense market is probably driving us more than the commercial, but not to exclude any path that we might follow. Carlo, thanks very much. Best of luck on the program. Absolutely. And look Thank forward to much. talking to you and, and seeing it once uh, she's underway. Absolutely, I look forward to that too. Thank you.